Let's make a VR game together. And in this new episode, we are going to make a pistol that we can grab and use to break objects into little pieces. As always, feel free to subscribe down below for the next episode to come about continuous movement and teleportation. Now, if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project, I will leave my Patreon in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's work on the gun for our game. So if we go to the let's make a VR game folder that you should have while installing the Unity package that I've sent you on the first episode, you should go to then prefab and see here this beautiful sci-fi pistol. Now we can drag it in the scene. There it is. Now again, as the same for the meteor, we want to be able to grab this sci-fi pistol. Now, as you can see, there are already some colliders in the children. So what's left is to go on its parent and add a XR grab interactable. Now, as always, this has also added a rigid body, but this is very important. As the collider are not inside the same game object of the XR grab interactable, you need to add them here in the colliders list. So we can simply drag here the base. And finally, the handle. And there is the two box collider that will be used to grab this pistol. Now, remember that by default, we are with the XR grab interactable. We can snap the object into a particular position on your end. Now, of course, you can tweak this particular position. And so in the case of this gun, what we can do is right click, create an empty called attach transform. And we can drag this attach transform here on the attach transform parameters of the XR grab interactable. Now let's click on play to see how this looks. Okay, so here you go. As you can see, when I grab the pistol, well, it snaps, but it's not the good position. So an easy fix is actually to while we play, you can unmaximize the windows and you can change here the attach transform position to what you want. Now, strangely, with previous version of the uh, Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, you could kind of update it uh, right away, you know, so change here the position and it would change the position of the gun directly. But I don't know why it's not working anymore. So basically, the only technique that works is like you need to kind of release and regrab the gun kind of quickly to make it work. But I mean, it's working. Now here you can play with the setting as much as you want. And I think I found something that I feel looks good. So now that it is ready, we can simply right click, copy, component, leave play mode, and pass the component back to the attached transform. And now if I click on play, the gun always snap to the correct position on the right hand. And as you can see, it apparently does not work on the left hand. Now that's something that we actually fixed in my tutorial series on how to make a VR game. And I will just leave a link to you for the people who want to fix the attached transform issue on the left end by making your own XR grab interactable to attached transform component. But a fix that we can do is actually set here the X value on the attached transform to zero. And basically with this, the attached transform will work on both ends as well, but will be restricted on the X position. And there you go. As you can see, the position is now correct on both and is kind of looking great. So that's nice. Well, the end is always not positioned very well on this gun. So what we can do is maybe improve this by adding the disabling end component that we added on the rock earlier in the previous episode. So let's go at the top and add a disable grabbing hand model. We can then uh, drag here our left terminator hand for the left end and our right terminator hand for the right end. And there you go. Now it should disable the hand grabbing the pistol. Okay, next we of course want to be able to fire something with this gun. Now to do so, let's click on add component and create another component called Meteor Pistol, which will handle this job. Okay, so remember when we add the disable grabbing hand model, we just had to basically know when we grab or release an object. And now this will be a bit the same, but not when we grab or release, when we activate the object. That's right. So let's go at the top and add using unity engine.xr first, and then using unity engine.xr.interaction.toolkit. Perfect. Now at the start, let's add a grab interactable with xr grab interactable grab interactable equals get component of type xr grab interactable beautiful and now we can do grab interactable dot activated dot add listener so this is when the interactable is activated 
So this means when we, you grab the object and that you press on the activation button, which is automatically set to the trigger button. Now, anyway, when we activate it, we can also set an event for the grab interactable deactivated. There you go. And so I'm going to create two functions to hook them to these two events. So a start shoot function and a public void stop shoot function. Beautiful. Now, again, we can add them over there, but we will have a little error because these two functions does not have a particular argument that the listener needs to have. But you can actually fake that this function has it by simply writing in front x little arrow to the right and parenthesis. There you go. Okay, so in my case, I simply want to play a certain particles when the player activate the gun. So for this, I'm going to go at the top and add a public particle system called particles. And when we start shooting, I want to do particles that play. But when we stop shooting, we want to do particles that stop. There you go. Now doing simply particle dot stop will not work because we also want to stop emitting and clear all of the particles that are in the air. And we can do so with true particle system stop behavior dot stop emitting and clear. So this will really stop every particle that are in the air and make sure that all of them disappear. Okay, here you go. Now we can save and go back to Unity. Of course, what's missing is the particles that you will be able to find in the prefab folder under the Let's Make a VR Game. And here they are, we can drag them in the scene. And as you can see, these are some beautiful red circle particles, which I made uh, in preparation of these tutorials. And yeah, I'm quite happy of how they look. Now, anyway, we can drag them under the sci-fi pistol. You can maybe reset its position and try to make the top ear came out of this position. There you go. It looks nice. You can, of course, change the size of this by changing the size of the object. As you can see, you can make them go a bit less far with this setting right there. But I think they look just great like this. So anyway, now let's save, go to our Meteor Pistol. And what I want to do is drag the particle system that we added over there. Oh, and something important is that we want this particle to not play at the start. So make sure here to have here the play on awake disabled, but it should be the case by default. Now, anyway, let's click on play to see if this works. Okay, here we go. So first thing first, you can see that if I grab the end, my end disappear. But now what happens if I press on the trigger button? And ta-da, as you can see, it is working. This is beautiful. We have successfully managed to activate the particle and stop them correctly. I really like this effect a lot. But now is the next big part of these tutorials because we have now a gun that can snap to our hand. We are able to activate it, but we want to use this activation to break a big rock. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, be able to break something. And the second thing is to trigger this break behavior with the gun. Now, to break something, we want to go to the prefab. And then, as you can see, there is a space waste breakable that we can drag here, which is basically a bigger rock than the other. Now, we want to be able to grab this rock, so I'm going to add a mesh collider set it to convex, add the XR grab interactable. We can again send the movement type to velocity tracking. I'm going also to select the previous rock, copy the disable grabbing hand model and paste it on this game object as well. Beautiful. But now, as you can see, as a children of the space ways breakable, there are four elements. And these are four elements that are basically the same model of their parents, but just part of it. So it's just the same rock, but break into pieces. So basically, the idea now is to kind of fake the break of this object by simply disabling the parent and enabling all of the children. Oh, and by the way, something that we can do beforehand is, of course, be able also to grab the broken part of the space waste. So I'm going to select them all, click on Add Component, Mesh Collider, Convex, XR Grab Interactable, Velocity Tracking, and Use Dynamic Attach. There you go, we can also pass the Disable Grabbing Hand Model component. Okay, phew, now let's go to its parent and create the famous Breakable component by clicking on Add Component, Breakable, and open the script in Visual Studio. 
Okay, so to disable the parent and enable the children, it's not really complicated. We can simply create a public list of game objects, which I will call breakable pieces. There you go. And at the start, we can make sure to disable them all. So we can browse this list. And for each of the item inside the breakable pieces, do item.setActive. False. Perfect. And now I'm going to create a new public void function called break. Now inside this function, we can do basically uh, the opposite of this. So a for each loop on our breakable pieces, but this time do item.setActive true. And finally, we want also to set the parent to false. So let's do game object set active false here. But there is quite of a little issue doing this because all of these breakable pieces are a child of, well, a parent that we disable. Well, they will be disabled as well. So we can actually fix this by setting the parent of all of the pieces to nil. So to do so, we can simply do item.transform.parent equal nil. Now, this is really great. And there you go. That's basically it. We can now save and go back to Unity. And there you go. Now, what's left is to drag all of the breakable pieces there. An easy way to do so is to lock the windows, select all the part and drag there over there. We can then unlock the window again and go back to the breakable. And now to trigger this breakable function with our pistol, we can reopen the meteor pistol component. And we will need to use a raycast to be able to trigger the break function. So to do so, I'm going to add a bunch of variables at the top. First, a layer mask, which will be the layer that will be used for our raycast. Finally, we want to add a shoot source, which will be the starting point of the raycast. A public float called distance, which will be the maximum distance of our raycast. And there you go. Now I'm going to create down below a new void function called raycast check. Beautiful. Now inside this raycast check function, we can do raycast hit and call the physics.raycast function, which will go at the start of the shoot source position in the shoot source.forward direction and which will have as a output the raycast hit that is called hit. And finally, the two last parameters are the distance and the layer mask. Beautiful. Now we can check that we have hit something by simply writing bool as hit in front of the physics recast. And if we have hit something, we can actually trigger the break function with, with hit.transform.gameObject send message break. So here, make sure that the break string value is the same as the break function name. Now, anyway, the last parameter we want is to set that we don't require a reserver with this send message. So let's do send message option dot don't require reserver. And there you go. The only thing we need is to, of course, do the raycast check. So we can add it simply in the update function. But there is an issue with this is that we only want to check the raycast when the player is activating the particle system. So to fix this, I'm going to add at the top a private bool called reactivate and set it initially to false. And what we can do is set the reactivate to true when we start shooting and to false when we stop shooting. And now if reactivate, we can do the raycast check. Beautiful. Now let's save and go back to Unity. And now here is the moment of truth. Let's see if we can break this big meteor with the firing of the gun. Okay, but of course, before testing our game, we need to set up the shoot source here and of course, the layer mask. Now for the layer mask, we can set it to basically everything. But for the shoot force, so the starting point of the ray, we can right click under the sci-fi pistol, create empty, rename it shoot source and kind of place it on the end of the gun like so. This looks great. And now we can simply drag it as the shoot source of the meteor pistol. Just like this, everything should be ready. Let's see if we can break this big rock into pieces with our gun. Okay, so for now, I can still grab the gun. I can fire the particle system, but now let's point it at the rock. And wow, as you can see, it is working and it has correctly break the rock into little pieces. And what's really fun is that you can actually keep on grabbing all of the little pieces and kind of throw them to the garbage can as well. 
So now everything is working well, congratulations. But there is something more that I want to do. The first thing is that, as you can see, there was a little issue with the material of one of the pieces, which is the energy pieces. So let me just right click in the asset, create material, call this energy, and maybe just set it to a blue color and even increase the emission to blue. We can then drag this new energy material into the missing material of this little cube. I hope this will fix it and we can have a better look at it. It looks great. And now anyway, the second thing that I want to fix is that it was, I felt like uh, this big rug was kind of breaked too easily. So a thing that we can do is actually check a couple of frame to know if we can break something. To do so, I'm going to select here this rock and we can do this very easily. We can add at the top a public float called time to break and set it to maybe two seconds and add a private float timer. And basically, when we call the break function, we can kind of increase the timer with time dot delta time. And if the timer is bigger than the time to break, then it is at this moment that we can call the rest of the function to break into pieces the big bug. Okay, so now let's save and click on play. And now let's see if it takes more time to break the rock. Okay, so I can still grab the pistol. I can still shoot on both ends. And if I press it on the rock for more than two seconds, it works perfectly. So congratulations. And as you can see, all the pieces are still interactable. So we've managed to finish the shooting pistol mechanism. And there you go, guys. Things are getting more and more interesting. Now, the next episode is about continuous movement and teleportation. So make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to support my work and get access to the Result Unity project, I will leave my Patreon in the description, as you know. So thank you for watching and see you very soon for the next video. Bye bye. Yeah.